Well, there's been a long-standing debate, and by long-standing I mean many thousands of years, <laughs> a long predating our work in this lab, um, about the nature of human knowledge. At the Lab for Child Development, we ask this question with a kind of special population, that is, babies and, and young children. And the reason we do that is that babies and kids can give us an additional, really interesting piece of the answer, which is, what of those parts are actually there from birth? Right? What are uh, the products of evolution? We may share them with other animal species. And what other parts might we have to acquire through experience with the world or through an explicit instruction? Some of the areas that we look at um, are how children acquire their first uh, words, how children understand numerical information in the world and may use that to reason through um, simple or complex math problems. We look at how children map faces to voices and start to break into the social world. One new angle that's been emerging over the past few years asks, how does knowledge that we might have been born with, we might have as a one-day-old infant, how does that knowledge actually shape learning? So lots of studies, not from my own lab, but from the past 30 years of research, suggest that even very little babies have expectations about the way objects behave in the world. So that led us to, to, to wonder whether surprise can affect and shape and guide learning. Um, so we set up situations that are designed to surprise them, that are designed to violate some prediction that they had about the way the world operates. We then try to teach the children something about the object. And what we've been finding is that even very young infants um, learn more efficiently. Their attention appears to be drawn toward things that violated their predictions. And I think there's a real opportunity for some um, translational research here. Um, going from what we know in the laboratory under very controlled conditions, what children and infants do in the laboratory, across into the classroom and understanding how those basic principles translate into a more applied setting. And that's one of the exciting future directions that I think lies before us.